Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna build a to-do list app in vanilla JavaScript. Here I have the demo and as you see here I have the today's date, there is a clear all button and then below is my, is my list and I have the first one go to work, eat breakfast and I can add new ones for example uh, go home and I can check and uncheck them and if I refresh the page everything stays the same because all this data is being stored in the browser local storage um, let's go ahead and get started but if, if you want to follow along with me I'm gonna leave a link in the description of the video from where you can grab the, uh, the source code and I would say you would um, just go ahead and copy the CSS file from my uh, CSS folder style.css file so copy everything from here because I'm not gonna go through all this CSS just for the sake of time. This is this is really basic. I'm just uh, gonna create the HTML file and I'm gonna include the CSS file in the HTML file, and then from there I'll just start doing the uh, coding the JavaScript. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna stop my live server, the current one, and I'm gonna close it. And I have another app uh, folder, sorry about that. I have another folder which is uh, JS to do, so I'm gonna open it. And here I'm gonna open my VS Code. And the first file I'm gonna create is gonna be the CSS file. Well, let's do the index.html first. So let's do index.html. And then I'm gonna create a folder oops what's that so the first one's gonna be index.html and then I'm I'm gonna create another folder which is gonna be the CSS and here I'm gonna create the CSS file which is style.css and here I'm gonna paste all the CSS so basically it's just the body styling here there's gonna be a container class a header class the header is the uh, app title and then the content where I'm gonna have the uh, list to do items, uh, date and clear, content UL, LI. Um, and you can look over it. I'm gonna have all these classes included in my index.html file. I'm gonna explain them a little bit. So um, I'm saving this file, I'm gonna close it. And then here I'm gonna start with a HTML file. And I'm gonna use the font awesome and the Google API um, font which is uh, Titilium web this is my kit from font awesome so is, uh, if you check the fontawesome.com you have to register an account there and then they give you uh, a kit like that and here I'm gonna include the CSS file so I'll have link style sheet and the source it's gonna be the CSS slash oops it's gonna be CSS slash style CSS and and now in my body section here I'm gonna have the first class which is a container so I have the class container I'm gonna have another class which is the header that's for for the title so I have class header and here is gonna be to do list and the title the page title is to also let's make it to do list so I'm gonna save it I'm actually gonna stop the live server. So, uh, I'm using VS Code and there's an extension which is called Live Server. Search for it, uh, Live Server, and install it if you if you wanna use it because it's really useful. Because here, for example, right now in my index.html, I just click on op Open with Live Server and it's gonna open a new tab, which is gonna have my app. And this is uh, it opens your app in a separate port. Which is really cool. I mean, I like it. Whenever you save the changes, you don't have to refresh the page all the time. It's it's gonna do it by itself. 
All right, the second class uh, below my header, it's going to be the uh, content. So I have div class content. And then here I'm going to have a uh, div ID. This ID is going to be for the date. Well, no, actually, we should have another block here. So this block is going to be, first of all, it's going to be uh, where we will have our date and the clear button. So it's going to be date and clear. And then here we will have div ID date. All right, and the second one, this is going to be empty. Let's make it empty, or let's say date for now, because using JavaScript, we will um, output date in this div. And then next div is going to be the clear. So we have div class clear. And here we will have an icon from uh, font awesome. So it's going to be I class and we have fas and fa hyphen sync hyphen alt and let's just close it for now like this all right and the next class is going to be our list so we'll have ul class well ul id and we have here list and then we have so let's add an item for now and then later we will add them using javascript so for now we'll have li and here we will have a text block which is going to have a class named text and here, let's say, uh, drink coffee. Okay, and then we will have another icon for the circle. Uh, so let's have I class F A R, and we have F A hyphen circle space co this is a class from the css file which has just some extra styling and then we'll have an action attribute and this is gonna be complete this is for that circle when we were clicking on to check the item and then we have id here uh it's, i'm gonna make it zero for now and then i'm gonna have another another icon like this one for uh, the delete button so it's gonna be trash here trash and i'm not need this not needing i don't need this class the action is gonna be delete and the id is gonna be zero for now let's leave it like that okay the next class it's gonna be below so we've got the list here, we've got the content, and now we will have another separate class, which is going to be for the add for our field. So we have div class add to do. And here we will have an icon. If you remember, I had an icon there is like a plus. So it's going to be I class FAS space f a hyphen plus hyphen circle and i'm gonna use the same co class for my css file let's actually check that out what that co so it can, so it's right here it makes it flex you know it's just some flex alignment and the line height so it's not a big deal it's just a little bit of css over there okay and then next we've got trash actually it's plus circle and I'm gonna close it 
and below I'm gonna add my input type text this is the field from where I add new items and there's gonna be an ID of course because we need this for JavaScript so I'm gonna have input and then a placeholder and I'm gonna say add new item and I'm just gonna close it like this let's save it let me see what's going on there so it looks everything looks fine uh, actually this icon from here the trash icon is not showing properly so drink coffee Well, I forgot I should add another hyphen, ALT. Okay, so now it's here. All right, we have it there. Now what I wanna do is I want to import. So let, let me create another file. I'm gonna create another script file, script.js. And now I want to import this JavaScript in my HTML, index.html file. So I'm gonna have here script and the source it's gonna be script.js all right I saved it let me check the source code just to make sure this script works so if I click on script okay it's all opens everything is fine all right next is our script.js file so as I said, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the UI, and we will have two classes. The first one is gonna be the UI, and then in the second part of this video, it's gonna be the store class. But for now, let's go ahead and output the date over here because we don't have it yet. So let's put the today's date, and we have a const date. And we have the document dot get element by ID and we have of course the date because if you see here give ID date so this is the place where we want to output the date and then below we have another constant so const today and we assign new date object like this and then below we will have date dot inner html and we assign today dot to local date string so we have this is a predefined javascript function to lock local date string and this one gets two parameters first one is language so we have en hyphen us and the second parameter is the options and this options parameter it's gonna be here above our today so we have options and we assign an object and we have weekday it's gonna be long this is the this is kind of like the format of the date so we have long weekday and then we have month the month we want it short and then the day is going to be numeric so we have numeric like this okay let's check this out i'm gonna save it and let's see what we have here so yeah it shows up the it outputs to today's date because it's march 13 and here from our HTML file, I can, I'm, I'm going to remove this date string and I will leave this div ID blank like this. And I'll save it. Oops. And now here, let's say UI object. And here we have, actually before this UI object, we will have a few more variables, but I'm going to add them. Uh, along the way first thing 
I want to assign everything we have in the, in the UL list. So where, where is it? Oh, right here. I want to assign everything from this UL list to one of uh, to a variable, so we can play with it. Like we can play with the content from there. We can add, remove, and stuff like that. So uh, here above the UI class, I'm gonna have const list, and I'm gonna assign the document dot get uh, query selector query selector and here is gonna be the list ID we have list here list ID is this one okay now the UI here we will have class UI like this and we will have few functions here the first function is going to be add to do list and uh, let me create it here so we have static add to do list and this to do list is going to get two parameters the first one is going to be to do this is the text kind of and then the second one is going to be the id because we should have ID for each item this in this way we can delete and edit check stuff like that that's how we know uh, which which item we're trying to uh, you know click on and stuff like that I will uh, explain more along the way and for now here I want to just console console log the to do I just want to console log the text I'm gonna uh, type in that input field and below this class, I'm gonna have a um, add listener uh, event. So this is gonna catch this add uh, add event listener is gonna catch the key or the the button I click I pressed on because I want to call this function only up only uh, when I click on the on the enter button because that's when I add a new item. So I'm gonna have here if press enter then call add new to do like this so we have here document dot add event listener and we have the key up key up parameter and then here we have function like this and then we have an if statement which is gonna check the key uh, the key code so we have event dot key code if if the event key code is equal to 13 which the 13 is the enter button number so if it detects number 13 then that means that we uh, press the enter button and then here we have a little validation we check another if if um, well so if we clicked on the button then we assign this to do text the the data from our field we assign it to a new variable which is going to be const to do item and we assign the input dot value like this and then we have a little another if statement and we check if to do item if there is any text in the to do item variable then we want to call this function from this object so we'll call add to do list from the ui object so that's what we do ui dot add to do list and this of course is going to get two parameters and the first one it's going to be uh, to do item To the item and the second one is going to be the id so here right below our list i'm going to create I'm add another variable which is going to be the id and by default this id is going to be zero so everything is going to start from zero and and all these variables are global so uh, i can call them from any object from uh, and 
in any object from from any function and they will have still the same value so but this zero can be changed of course and it's gonna be incrementation and stuff like that uh, and actually the increment in, uh, increment is gonna be here so we'll have ID plus plus we're gonna increment it and it's becoming one after zero all right and after so we sent that to do over here let's let's go ahead and check how that works so I will open my console this this warning here is from the font awesome there's nothing from our app so don't, don't worry about that uh, let me add something here first to do if I press enter uh, I see it in my console first to do so everything works fine the function gets called but I want to reset this field after I click on the, on the enter button so to do that in uh, uh, after this if statement I'm gonna update the input value to an empty string input dot value it's gonna be like that so if I add say let's say first item I press enter I see the first item here but then the field becomes empty it's empty I actually saw something uh, it's missing this class from here I don't know for some reason it doesn't show so let's check this out so we have e class f a plus so I misspelled it needs to be circle circle let's save it go back okay so now it shows here see this plus over here okay let's continue with this event let's see we've got that um, well I think we're good for now for this event now let's go ahead and get this data and add it to the UI because right now it doesn't doesn't show up here so I'm gonna remove this one from here which is hard-coded uh, where is it from here so but before we do that uh, let's have another variable const list item and we assign backsplashes make sure you use them like this okay and then here we have our uh, li li tab uh, tag so I'm gonna cut it from here and paste it over here like this uh, where I have the text I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna add dollar sign curly breaks that's why I use uh, backslash like splash like this just because I want to use variables inside of this string so here I'm gonna have to do and then where I have the ID zero here I'm gonna have a variable which is ID of course and the same ID goes to my trash icon so like this all right let's save this and let's see what's going on here if I add test one I press enter it doesn't show up because it doesn't show up because we we don't inject it in the DOM yet so after we have this list item below we have another um, so we, we will use here the insert uh, adjacent HTML which is a JavaScript function um, Yes, so let's do a quick search here. Insert adjacent HTML, and on their website you can read that method. The insert adjacent HTML method of the element interface per, uh, parses the spec specified text as HTML or HTML and inserts resulting nodes into the DOM. So it's like it's injecting the content in, in the DOM. And to do that, we will grab our we'll grab our list. 
So we've got the list here from our UL. All right, and having this list, we will call the insert JSON HTML. So I'm gonna copy it from here like this. And I'll paste it here. And this one gets, it's taking two parameters. The first one is the position. And the next one is the item. So we get position, uh, just a second. Position list a list item like this. List item is the item we want to insert or inject in our uh, UL list. And the position, this one they have. So the position. Let's go back a little bit here. Uh, let's see the position. It's before begin, after begin, before end, and after end. In our case, we will use before end. So copy this stuff from here. And here we will have position, but this is going to be const, const position, and we assign to this const position the before end. Okay, like this. Like this should be fine. Now it should work. So if I save it and go back and type in anything here, I can see this uh, new item is being added to my list. But if I refresh, it disappears because, of course, it's just the UI for now. We still have to create these two other methods to uh, check and delete the item. So let's go ahead and do that. Now in the UI, I'm going to create another function. And let's start, let's do the uh, complete, let's complete the task. So we have static complete to do and this is gonna get an element okay and here we will have two uh, variables one is gonna be check and one is gonna be uncheck so we have const check and we assign to this one the icon for uh, checked circle so if you remember from the demo, there was whenever I would click on it, it would become green and there is like a check, uh, check circle or stuff. You will see, um, let me just add this class. This is from Font Awesome. So we have FA hyphen check hyphen circle. And then the next one, the second one is going to be uncheck. And this is going to get the... Uh, circle is going to get circle back the unchecked circle and then here we have we should use the toggle function javascript function so we have element dot well let me see let's just console log i want to show you what's this element uh getting like what value it's gonna have so in our we should add another uh, event listener right here below. We have our uh, key up. So we'll have document dot add event listener. And we will catch the click event. All right. And we will have a function here, which is going to, I'm going to use ES6. I didn't use ES. ES6 for this one, but for this I'm going to use ES6, so just, just to show you that you can do it using ES6 as well. So we have event like this. It's missing the function though from here, that's, what, that's the difference. Okay, here I'm going to have another const element, and I will assign the event target. So what this does is it catches the element on which I clicked. All right, I'm going to show you in a second what that means. And let me have another uh, catch element. Click, let's do that. Console log.
console log element. Now check this uh, console. If I click, I click on this block, it uh, console logs div class content and everything it has in the content. All right. Now if I add a new, let's say I'm gonna add test. I press enter, and if I click on this check circle uncheck, like I clicked on it, and I get the uh, uh, the, the item from my list which is I class F A R F A circle and here's all the content supposed to have um, actually it's not it's not the content but I, I can grab the ID from here which is an attribute I can also grab the action so in this way that's what we send to the check function all right so here I'm gonna do I'm gonna have another if statement and this if statement is gonna grab, is gonna check the action because in, in my index.html I have an action, actually it's here. I have an action for each icon. So this action is complete as the icon which is gonna complete the task. And then I have another one for delete. So here in my if statement, I'm gonna have if um, element dot attributes. that action so um if if i get so if my script finds any action in the in, on in the element i clicked on and w that means that i have action only for these two icons only so uh, it's gonna grab the data only from these two because I, if i click somewhere else it's not gonna this this if it's not gonna work so i have that if statement here uh, okay, and then below I have another const, and this is element ac action, and I assign to this element action uh, the element dot attributes dot action dot value. So I get the the action value, and then I have another if statement. So I have if um, element action equal to complete then I'm gonna call the complete complete to do function from the UI so I have UI dot complete to do and as a parameter I'm gonna send the um, element All right, I have it here now in my to do here I'm gonna have a console log I want to console log the element so here I'm gonna show you what I get from from those uh, items so if if you see right now I click somewhere and it doesn't it doesn't console log anything now if I add test one if I click on it it doesn't show anything until unless I click on these two icons so if I click on the check um, complete item like complete task I get this in the console log which is from my complete to do function now this one doesn't get anything because I don't have like this if statement doesn't get another uh, action um, unless it's uh, complete so let's continue in this function over here now this check circle I'm gonna use a toggle function uh, which is gonna switch this icon so whenever I will click on this complete task uh, this uh, uh, class from here is gonna change it's gonna be replaced by this one and vice versa if I click one more time then they will be they're gonna switch each other <coughs> okay now we're here I'm gonna remove this console log so let's go ahead and do the toggle. So I have element dot class list dot toggle. And here I have the check variable, which is this one from here. Now we should do the same thing 
uh, for 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 the second one. So I'm just gonna duplicate it, and here I'm gonna put the uncheck like this. Okay, and then after that, I want to uh, I want to uh, like switch the I wanna I wanna add a class here, which is um, in the P class text. Here I'm gonna add the class which is check line. So you go on the CSS file and get the check line. It has a text decoration line throw. So it's gonna be line throw the text. Uh, okay, where is that? It's here. So we will have element dot parent node dot query selector, and we get here text. And then we have dot class list dot toggle. And here we have the class which is check check line. Let's copy it from here. Alright, and paste it here. Like this. And this should work now. Let's go back and let's check that. So if I add any stuff here, if I click on this button, you see it. There's a line throw uh, throw the text, and then the, this icon is changing. We can actually also inspect it and see. Uh, so check this out. We have the F A R F A circle. Now, if I click on this circle, the class the classes are switching, and here I add a new class with it, which is check line. All right, let's go back to the console. Let's uh, let's create the uh, remove button let's make it work so let's go back and create another function here which is going to be let's do it above our complete to do and this one is going to be static remove to do and we get of course the element and here we will have so we will navigate to the parent node, parent node, and then we we'll remove the child from there, which is gonna remove the, the entire li um, tag, in the entire item. So here we have element dot parent node dot parent node dot remove child and we have element dot parent node okay so we have element parent node parent node remove child element dot parent node okay let's save it let's go back and see what happens so I'm gonna add random stuff checking works if I click on this uh, icon uh, doesn't work yet just because we didn't specify this function in our here at listener so here if we have so I'll say else if if the action if the element action is delete if it's delete then here we call this UI dot remove to do from our UI okay so this is the function from here and we get we send the element as a parameter let's save it let's go back and let's see what happens I had a random stuff here uh, we can check it if I click on this it disappears from UI so that works now you may be it may be a little confusing to you this stuff so let's do a console log console log element just to show you how we navigate through this parent node parent node so add this random stuff if I click on this trash icon we get this um, I this is the icon all right let me actually let me add some more <coughs> So I get up, I delete this one, and whenever I click on this icon, it gets as an element, it gets this uh, i i tag. Now, if we go to the elements, and this i tag is this one, right? And if you saw, 
we go back to the parent node and in our case the parent node is le and then we go back again parent node which is the ul and then from here we remove the child of, uh, we remove the the child and the child of course is this le from uh, from uh, on which one we clicked so that's how all this stuff works all right i'm gonna remove this console log go back let's make sure everything works fine okay and let's see we've got that uh, we can remove items we can check them or complete them and now it's time to create our store so i would like let's let's store them in the browser local storage now and this is going to be the second part of the video all right guys now it's time to store all this data in the browser's local storage so let's go ahead and create another class below our ui class here we'll have class store and let's just leave it store it doesn't really matter you can name it the way you want and here we'll have a function which is going to be a static function we will name it add add to do list it's going to be also add to do list except this is going to be in, in, in a separate uh, class and this add to do list is going to add this list to the storage uh, local storage so we have add to do list and of course we get two parameters the to do and then the id and here in our add to do we'll have a const which is going to be to do and we assign the um, so get to do here we will have another function okay add to do let's create another function right above this one so let's have this static get to do so get to do and this doesn't have any parameter which so this function actually uh, it's gonna check or it's gonna get everything we have from the storage first and then after that so we will call this function in this function here where is store dot get to do like this all right so we assign everything from the storage here we'll, he will do that assign everything from the storage to the to do uh, variable and then after that we just push the new item in this variable and then just update the storage so let's do that here and um, let's just create this one first get to do so here we'll have a variable lat is going to be to do and then we'll have an if statement if local storage which is a javascript predefined function get item which uh, our item is going to be to do uh, okay and if it's equal to null then this to do it's gonna be we assign an empty array else because it doesn't because there's nothing in the storage otherwise if there's if there's any value in the um, local storage then we assign it to the to do variable and we say json dot pairs and then here we pairs the uh, local storage dot get item and the item is to do like this and then after that we just return the to do we return the entire list of items from the storage okay and then after that we assign all this stuff we assign it to our to do's from our add to list function 
and then below here we will have to do's dot push so we push the new item in our case it's gonna be text and text is to do and we also have the ID which is gonna be the ID and also the completed it's gonna be false by default because it's not gonna be completed we will update this one whenever we will complete the task okay we have this in place and then after we do that we update the local storage with the new to do's array which is gonna have a new item in it so we have local storage dot set item and here we have to do and then we have json dot stringify and then we have to do's so we stringify the whole uh, array and then save it in the local storage like this so let's save it and where is that id well let's see what happens for now just to show you a little bit of this process so let's go to the console um let's just make sure that we won't have any errors let's say just a b c d now if we click on application uh, we have the to do key from our local storage on the left side you see here where's the storage there's local storage open that up and click on your domain and here we will see the key we just created and all these items which is uh, in our case we have Well, we should have four. So let's see. Okay, let's check. Let's do that one more time. So we get new one. For some reason, it doesn't want to show anymore. But uh, let me refresh everything one more time. It's just is really weird, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna copy it. Let's see now here. Oops. Still doesn't show for some reason. I don't know what I did. I just removed it from here. Let's see. Clear. All right. Let me see one more time. So we've got that uh, call to do list. Okay, after we press key, we call add to do list. Well, that's because, well, for some reason, this is really weird, but we should add event listener. Uh, I had to call this function over here, too. So, here's going to be add item to UI. And then here I'm going to have add item to local storage and I'm gonna call the store dot add add to do list and here I'm gonna have the to do item and the ID so this function is right here and then it calls this function from here okay let's save it let's go back uh, refresh it okay so for some I don't know why oh okay now it makes sense because in, I had all the data from the previous app from the demo that's why it was showing up here and I was just it just confused me I was like what the heck is going on here now 
I've been recording this video for uh, for quite a bit, so I didn't want to start everything over. Okay. All right, so we have it here. There's one item. If if I click on this to do key, we see this item. Is a JSON. It, it's like in a JSON format. So if I add, let's say, f any as many as I want, we can see this is like an object here. It's like a JSON format object. All right, but if I remove them, they don't disappear from here. So let's let's do this. Let's remove them from. Uh, let's create this functionality to remove them. Or before we do that, let's actually because if we have them in the in the local storage, and if I refresh the page, they don't show up. So let's do first app. In order to do that, we should call this function you know, somewhere below our our classes. It's going to be like a, a global a global call of that function. So let's go ahead and do that below our store. Object so he will have event to display to do's and here we have document dot uh, add event listener so we have DOM content loaded first parameter and we have Um, UI actually here is the function we want to call to output all this data so um, we will have another function we should create another function here in the UI which is here and this function is gonna display all the to do's and then after that we call it here I was gonna I was gonna call this function uh, this function get to do's but it's not gonna work so let's create another function here it's gonna be static and we'll have display to do and this is not gonna have any parameter and then we have const to do's and of course we call that function from our store and then we have get to do's which is getting all the data from our store, local storage. You see this one, we explained it already. And then after that, uh, we will loop through, uh, through this object. So we'll have to do start for, for each, for each, and then using ES6 to do. All right, we uh, call the UI add UI add to do list. So we have UI dot um, add to do list, and we get two parameters. So uh, we get we loop through that object because this is an object and it has keys, as you see here in the storage. It has keys. You see, we have text ID completed. And uh, we have a uh, different IDs one two three four five and then text is also different so that's what we do here we loop through the storage because we've got all the storage we had and then we loop through that uh, array and then we we call um, this add to list function for each item you see for each item of these ones and then we just assign the HTML to the to the content which is add to do list function so that's what we do here and then we have two parameters. The first one is going to be to do dot text, and then we have to do dot id, and then we have to do dot completed. Like this, you see text id and completed. And then we call this function here, and the we should add the third parameter which is gonna be if this is the status we're completed well let's let's name it let's do it if if checked it doesn't really matter because it's gonna have the same value okay now we have if checked here in our to-do list we will have 
two more variables which is going to be completed and the status icon because that's how we want to replace them here it's going to be like a toggle as we had on this one right so let's do that we have here const completed and we assign so if if this if if uh, checked it's true then we assign the uh, check line which is this one check line which is going to have a line text is going to have a line uh, check line otherwise we assign nothing okay and then here we will have the same thing except this one is going to be status icon and if check then we assign the fa hyphen check circle if not we just assign the fa circle so it's pretty much the same thing as we did here with the toggle but we just do this one in the ui after we got all the data because um, uh, this one may be true you know you never know maybe true or false and according to this one if it's true then that means we should have a line on that text. If it's not, then we don't show anything. And then we'll also change the icon, of course. And then here where we have our item, where is the text, we will add another JavaScript variable, which is going to be the completed. And then here where we have this class, where is our icon, uh, we want to check, uh, replace that with the, let's say, we have a status, status icon, like this. Okay, the ID stays the same, this one stays the same. Uh, and then we have this const, okay, we insert that. Alright, let's see what happens now, I'm going to save it. Uh, did I, okay, so here we didn't call this, we should call the function from the UI, UI dot display to do like this and let me see if there's anything else we should do here okay just leave it like that and let's see if we have any errors we actually don't have any errors but we see all this data from the storage it's being outputted to the screen you see we have it like we have it here and then here too so it seems like it works, except we should make this check, you know, check task. Because right now if I mark it as checked and if I refresh it, it doesn't, it doesn't keep it checked. Because it, we, sh we should update this false to true. So let's do that in our, let's say we have these two functions here. Okay, that's something we should do from our complete to do. So from here. Now below here, whenever we check a task, we want to update the storage. So let's do that. We will have a constant. Oops, const. Current ID. Element dot attributes the ID the value so whenever we click on that check button we are grabbing the ID from this one which is uh, this one you see this ID in our case it's five okay we grab the current ID and then we also want to grab the to do's from our storage so we have const To do and we assign the store dot get to do's like this and then here we will have a loop and we will update this to do array and then after that we'll just uh, insert it back to the local storage so we have to do's dot for each for each to do uh like this 
but we have the to do and we also want to get the index the index is uh, let's go back to the cache index is this one zero one two three four five so we get the index as well and then here if we have an if statement if the to do dot id it's equal to the current id then we update it but let's add a plus sign here just to uh, let javascript know that we want to check this these two ones uh, are strings not string but um numbers and we want it to compare as numbers so here and then after that we have to do's index dot completed and we assign it to do's index dot completed false or true all right so what does what do we have here whenever we click on this item we click on this icon here we get the completed value all right no here we get the completed value and if the value is false then we assign true otherwise we assign false so if this is true we assign false if this is not true we assign uh, true and we assign all this stuff to our uh, to do's array using this index because that's how we get the current that's how we get the item from our list and then below here we just update the story so we have local storage dot set item okay and we have to do json stringify to do's like this so let's save it and let's go back and see what happens here you see it don't have to refresh i'm gonna check v and if i refresh the v stays checked if i check this one this one also stays checked and actually there is something else i wanted to change i was just looking now here and um, it seems like this id it's not gonna be unique uh, in order to have it unique we should let's replace this id with a um, date that now this is gonna return all uh, uh, the date milliseconds the current date in uh, milliseconds which means it's gonna be unique all the time so okay let's save it let's go back see what we have here add new one check it refresh uncheck it refresh you know it's all good all works now let's uh, let's actually work on this one clear wall button and that's that's something we should add in the ui i'm thinking about that that needs to be uh, something in the ui and let's add it here it's going to be a separate function so we have static or uh, clear to do and here we just <coughs> Here we just uh, get the list dot inner HTML and we assign an empty string which is gonna remove everything from the UI everything from, uh, we have on our list because we assigned the list the UL list to our list so it's gonna remove everything from there and also local storage dot clear it's gonna delete everything from the storage let's save this like this and then now uh, we should have oh sorry about that guys and now here we should have a um, we should call this function and we call this function from our index HTML file where we have our icon let's do add to do input uh, with our icon clear oh it's here okay so here we have on click to do like this let's see what happens 
console create it is not defined uh, clear to do it's not defined okay just because we didn't uh, we should add the UI the object from where this function is so if I click on it everything disappears from the UI and of course from the storage so I add new stuff here and I click on this clear all yeah it, it deletes everything removes everything from the UI from everywhere okay now we stop so let's me let me add some more and let's check the storage I think we should create uh, we should fix this delete button because right now if I delete if I click on delete it deletes just from the UI not from the storage so let's go ahead and do that uh, we should do that in our let's see uh, remove to do from our JavaScript here let's do that here remove to do from the storage okay so here we've got this but here we do the same thing we just get we grab the current ID so we have const current ID and we assign the element dot attributes dot ID dot value uh, this is const okay and then below we'll have another one which is uh, const to do and we assign the store dot get to do so we get everything from our storage now below here we'll have an if uh, for each so we have to do dot for each we'll loop uh, throw each uh, throw this array and we get a to do and index like this and here we have that if statement um, to do that id it's equal to oops there's an error it's equal to the current id All right, I'm gonna add this plus sign just to make sure these are numbers. And then we have to do's dot splice, splice index dot one. Okay, so we splice the current, we're moving from there, from the to do's array. like this and then after that we just update local storage so we have local storage dot set item to do and we have json dot stringified and we get the to do like this let's save it let's go back and let's see what's going on here so we have five one two three four five six okay we have six because it starts from zero makes sense uh all right so if i remove the first one we'll see the first one goes away if i remove the last one let's pay attention to the same content okay the last one has been removed and we can remove all of them like this so everything works fine Let's remove everything close this well so it looks like we're done guys uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions just feel free to leave them in the comments if you like the video please uh, subscribe to my channel like this video and I will see you in the next tutorial